Um, yeah, with our show, it's, 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 it looks at, you know, as fans, we watch you guys um, perform number one re records and, and all that stuff. But we always want to know the story behind, you know, how you guys started off, how you guys made it through, how you guys managed the industry. Because I think we've been now a lot more educated about how it's not the videos and the, uh, the tours aren't really the true stories to how challenging it is behind the scenes. And so a lot of fans have been really sympathetic about the struggles that could happen about the industry. So um, having the background of what you guys are up to is going to be great. And then we lead into you know, what to expect going forward. Um, my audience is international, so I know you guys are from, well, originally Philly, but I don't know if you want to give us a sort of a history as to where you guys are from um, and, and sort of how you guys start, started. Are we, are we on now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. So yeah, we are originally from Philly. Um, you know, we started together in the early 90s. Um, you know, uh, ended up in California after getting our record deal and went around the world a few times, landed at Top of the Pops. Okay, yeah, as we've seen. And we, we're here in Vegas right now. Okay, well, I'm gonna go back a little bit because uh, about the time you guys came out in, 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 in the mid nineties, who, who were the sort of inspiration, sort of bands that you may look up to and think, you know, we, we wanna try and emulate in some ways, be it original, but, these are, the, these are sort of a, the ones we could look at. Wow. Well, I know that uh, when we first started out, our, one of our biggest inspirations, like everyone's biggest inspiration was Take Six. Okay. And you know, we pretty much mimicked a lot of the things that they did until we could jump off into our own accord. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Right, because we were mostly a cappella at that time. But there were okay. more. Yeah, no, Take Six had no instruments until I think one of the fat records. But you back in those days, you guys were just strictly a cappella? Yeah. Okay. We were strictly a cappella at the time. But were you thinking about making it big or was it just stuff you did, did for, you know, you know, like playing football or playing basketball? We just sing. Was that it? Or? Well, most of the time, sorry, most of the time, uh, you know, we, I know a lot of acts when they get together and they, they, they want to get out there real quick and everything. But, you know, for us, most of it was honing our talent, you know, learning something, learning how it goes, trying mm -hmm. to figure it out first. You know, it took us, you know, it didn't happen overnight when we met Babyface, you know, you know it took us like over six years of nights, you know, to hone our talent, make sure everything was tight, put it together and you know, it was it was a it was a project, you know, and then we just happened to get good at it. And by the time then when we met Babyface, you know, he was saying that you know we were a self-contained unit. That's why he wanted to sign us because he really felt like he didn't have much work to do. Okay. But then I as I guess, I mean it, it's it might seem straightforward, you know, you come together as a group, you start to sing learn songs and hope for a record deal, but was, um, you know, six, six years, but as I said, were you guys, from the time you started off thinking about, we want to do this professionally and get a record deal, or was it just stuff that you were just doing in school? No, no, what it was actually, is it started out being a lot of um, talent shows. And okay. It was very competitive in Philadelphia, so, what we would do, we would always challenge ourselves to be better than ourselves. And, and so when we get to these shows, we would find ourselves realizing that we were better than ourselves because <laughs> we were winning a lot of these talent shows. Yeah. Okay. And so it, it got yeah. to the point where um, <laughs> the group boys to men, who yeah. came from the same, uh, the same you know, uh, playing grounds as we did, they were out, they had already made it. So while they were um, out there and, and on tour and, and getting their awards and all of that, we were like the top in Philly at the time. We were the next group to come out of, out of Philly, really. So, okay. 
you know, right. we had we had them to look up to in that sense. Okay. We were never we were never in competition with them because we come from the same grounds. But you know, there's four of them and five of us, and that was just the formula that we had. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, so is it that seemed that they made it, did you think, well, there's a chance that we could make it? Or was it a case of, because as I said, I, I, you know, back in those days, it's not like now you can release music easily, but back then, you know, you, to get a, a deal and, and to do all that stuff, it, it, it wasn't that easy, especially if you're not in a New York or LA. Did you think, how did you think you might get to that next level and, and get discovered? We were 100% optimistic that it would happen. There, there was no doubt. Right. I mean, that was, that, was the, that was the main focus for us to even get together. One, number one, number one because we love the music. Two, because we love what the harmony uh, sound and felt like when we would get together and learn it together. And then three, we just had that vision that um, if they can do it, we're going to do it. Yeah. So we did it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I say all the time, like I say over and over again, like when Juan Day said, can it really happen, but the dream just fade away? I mean, yeah. you know, the way we felt about it is we, we had to keep going, you know, you know, we were, do, we were trying and then suddenly, you know, here's Boys to Men and they blew up like so crazy. It's like, you know, you still got to put, you know, that foot in the ground and keep driving. So as they were soaking up. And you know, the crazy thing is, is that they got with Babyface and that was a dream of ours at first. <laughs> we got with Babyface first. And then it was kind of like, oh man, like they standing and they, they, <laughs> they're doing exactly what we planned on doing. And then suddenly it happened for us where we met with Babyface and we happened to be his project. So against all odds and yeah. not in spite of, but because of, yeah. We made it, so. Yeah, so, I mean, going back to the, because um, you were doing the acapella stuff, the, so Take Six were, you know, mm. contemporary gospel uh, acapella, and as I said, they, they um, commercially, they weren't, you know, back in those days, if you go, you know, sell 200,000, that wasn't, that was pretty good, a uh, golden gold. But you, did you have your eyes set on, you know, going double platinum. So that means we need to have a sound and a type of music that um, could cross over. Or what were you, were you just sing with a sing a cappella stuff and hopefully somebody likes it? Sure, well, our sound just came naturally just because we were doing what we loved. We started out with Take Six and then we branched off to all of the, um, the different groups that were out doing different things and we were singing with them and then we had our own stuff. But really, we didn't try to, we need to sound like this or sound like that. It was just something that just came natural. Right? Mm. And also, I mean, hey, look, honestly, to, you know, hats off to Take Six because they, if they would have been an R&B group, you might not have heard of a voice to men mm -hmm. or as yet. I mean, but not in the context that you hear in as today. They were the biggest inspiration of our time to, to what, you know, how, how groups like us envisioned ourselves. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, you know, them, them being gospel, uh, you know, they, they just led the way. Mm -hmm. They led the way. And even though they were gospel, a lot of their songs had a lot of elements to R&B yeah. as well. So. Yeah. The, um, I, I guess one of the questions that we always get to ask, and 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 you know, I have to forgive me for not starting this off. So there are four of you in there, so it'd be great to go around and get your names individually, and then also where you started singing. So then we can just get the story from each one of you. So yeah, your name, um, you know, if you're from Philly as well, and where you sort of learned to sing. So, um, where am I from? Well, yeah, well, my name is uh, CJ. CJ, okay. From um, Southwest Bay. Okay. And, so, and singing wise, though, did you, where did you get to start picking up singing? Um, I would say, I mean, I've been like just. 
I was basically a music nerd since I was like 13, 14 years old. My dad got me my first little 49 key Casio and I would just be in my room. Not everybody's outside doing different things. And I just didn't feel like being like that. I, I just found my love in making music, even though it was childish music back in that day, but I was developing. Okay. But, um, that's that's where that's where it came from with me. And was it more so playing or was it singing? Or, or what were you doing? It was, it was playing. Um, I became so good, I lost most of it when I joined the group, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I was actually like a, a, a percussionist. I was playing, I don't know if you heard of Bobby Lyle and, um, and other uh, jazz fusion pieces like that. I learned, taught myself to write. So therefore, um, in school, um, I got with the music department, although I was an art major, and they adopted me into the music department, and I was writing and um, playing there. So basically, I taught myself, and that's the way I started honing in with my music skill. I really wasn't thinking about singing until until um, until later on, but uh, the foundation was there because of, because it made me to be musically inclined. Okay, and so when you, the, the, the actual singing part, did you, you know, did you, it was in school that you started to get the singing part and? No, I didn't sing until I, like right when I graduated. That's when I very first started. I wrote my, I wrote my songs when I was like 14 and 15, but I really didn't see myself like this singer. I wanted to sing, but I didn't see myself like that, you know, but um, you know, like when, when Boys and Men came out, it was like, oh my God, this is really something that, I'm, that we want to do, you know. So, but it was mostly, it was mostly playing jazz, um, you know, fusion and different things like that. But okay. that's, that was my band. Okay. I can go down the <laughs> my, my name is, my name is Dion Allen, and I am an original member and and for those of you that are as yet fans you're probably thinking like you know this is claude thomas me and claude thomas are original original members claude thomas <laughs> we put the group together uh for all the the, the our true fans that are like huh just stick around for the backstory and our and our story and, and, and then you'll find out more about that keep coming but um <laughs> but uh i uh i started out um you know, my grandmother was a famous, she was in a famous gospel choir called the Wilmington Chester Mass Choir um, in De from Delaware. But um, I'm from North Philly. Um, grew up loving to be in church choir, school choirs. I played the trumpet for a few years um, from like second grade to eighth grade. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I fell in love with Anita Baker. Like, <laughs> You know, when she first came out and really, 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 really made me want to sing. And, um, you know, played with the instruments, you know, started the group, and here we are. And, and when you said started the group, this was what, you, you, just saying, let's have a group. You didn't want it to go solo because that, that's... No. <clears throat> Personally, I never, me, I'm, I'm not a... A soloist, you know, I'm not. I, I I thrive personally. I thrive the best in a group setting. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I did that for my grandma because I used to I used to watch her come home, bring her tape choirs, her, her choirs tape, and play it, and then I would be listening to the the choir singing, and it really did something to me. So yeah, I personally I never wanted to be in a, a, a solo setting, but. Yeah, when we put the group together, it was it just it, it just meant everything. Okay. 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 Now me, I'm Kenny Terry. Uh, I'm the bass of the group, and uh, I'm from North Philly. North Philly, another reason. <laughs> so, and my I guess my first experiences with music um, came from my mom because my mom she, she my mom could sing. And she had her days where she would, you know, sit down and sing a lot of songs, not no particular um, 
gender ring thing. She, she was singing a male song. She was singing a female song. And she mm -hmm. had that gift of being able to emulate most of these voices that she uh -huh. was singing. I picked that up naturally from her. And then when I got to high school, I, I got on, I was never on the, in the church choir ever. But okay. when I got to high school, I was in the church, I mean, not a church, I was in a school choir. And that's pretty much where I got a lot of my um, my music theory and my my vocal experience. Mm. So between my mother and uh, growing up in high school, that's pretty much where um, my music thing started. So I took on the gift of uh, being able to emulate different people's voices as well. Okay. And that kind of shaped who I am. So then who did, who, who were you, who, who did you lean towards the most vocally? It stems from, <laughs> um, I would say Steve, Stevie Wonder was one of my main, my main uh, people that I would lean to. Yeah, Stevie. Okay, okay. And you yeah. also didn't want to go solo, you wanted to be part of a group? Sorry? You, you also didn't, did you want to go solo or did you think I need to be in a group? Yeah, I had, I, I actually did do some solo things, um, like singing lead in the choir and stuff like that in school. But once I left school, I actually did join like a couple of different groups before I actually um, met these two guys. Okay. So, you know, I, I still had my experience of going, you know, getting uh, more music developed in my brain and in my spirit. Okay. And then, yeah. But um, as far as being a solo artist, I figured once I met these guys, I'll just put that on the back burner because he loved us. <laughs> 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 okay. So, so my name is Paris Smith. Um, I got my start when I was 15 years old. I got signed to Boys the Men's record label, which took me from Ohio, where I'm originally from. Lima, Ohio is a small little city. Okay. They brought me to Philly, me and my cousin, we could do a duo, I guess that's a better way to say it. And we were living in Germantown out there and we got to meet all the who's who who was on in Philadelphia. And I think around that time, these guys had left and they were like the next big thing. And um, one day we heard them on the radio and it was like, that's the dude that, that's the group that Mark was in or whatever, this time the third. And they were, Boys the Men was ecstatic about as yet. And so was everybody else in the studio. I'm like, these dudes, it's crazy. And the bass singer, Mike McCary was like, the bass singer, crazy. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. <laughs> so everybody was clowning that. I fell in love with As Yet. Years later, after 9-11 happened here, I moved to LA. I moved out to LA and that's when I met Kenny and Dion. And I hadn't met Claude yet and I met all, everybody that was in the circle at the time. Yeah. And we just all stayed connected and through music, you know, I started in the church, you know, through music, learning that and what I learned from Boys the Men and being around you know, the Teddy Riley's, the Boys, the Men's, the Tanks, you know, the Dave Hollis, all these different people that I was able to go in the studio with and vocal arrange for and, you know, sing hooks and backgrounds and stuff where I learned. And that's kind of how I honed my skills from the, like transitioning from the church to the R&B world, because sometimes that's a switch that some people can't switch off. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, that's, that's good. But you, you said you were assigned to their label, Oh, it didn't, Stone so I, Stone. pardon? Stone Creek Recordings. Oh, Stone Creek, okay. I yeah, think I've seen it. So um, did, did you do any, did, did you guys release anything? No, we did a whole album, like two albums worth of music and something happened internally, you know, with the label and everything. Only person that had a chance of coming out was Uncle Sam. He had the song, I Don't Ever Want to See You Again. Okay. He came out and no one else got to come out after that. So everybody went, kind of went their own ways and, and Boys the Men continued touring and being Boys the Men after that, you know. Oh, wow. so, wow. Opportunity presented itself, you know, for me to be a part of this group and it was a no brainer because I already looked at them as like big brothers to me. We yeah. Cool, making moves and things happening together. Um, so when the opportunity presented itself, it was a no brainer and I was happy to be a part of it, you know. Yeah. So I, I guess the question is always the case when you're recording two albums worth of music, what happens to the music? It's just sitting, collecting <laughs> dust. It's not amazing music. Everybody got stories like that, the music that's just sitting in the computer that never got a chance to get light. 
but you know, it's how it mm. works. <laughs> yes, no, I think we're, 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 yeah, we, we've been learning a Yeah. Yeah, we've been learning a So now, as I said, if we go on to um, Wikipedia or anything, we, we'll see the story of, of, of um, you know, management, people coming, people leaving, Mark coming in and everything. But it'd be good, as I guess, you guys from the beginning guess to, okay, how, how so sort of the origin of where, where you started when you decide to come together, get the name and from management and before you meet Babyface, how the group kept moving and changing. Yeah, so who could start? Because as I said, what was the question? Well, so we know the five who were on the biggest single that you guys had, which was you know, last night. But those were the five people who were when you guys started off as when you decided as a five that this is what we're gonna do. So it'd be good just to just to hear, you know, what sort of, how you guys came and had got the name as yet, how you went from the, the originals, then not everyone making it to LA. And, and, and before we get to the fact that you've been able to reunite again. Okay, so <laughs> the version. <laughs> so we started out of course you know of course you know if you're a true fan then you notice that one or two are not here uh you know we changed we we, we changed like the wind <laughs> but um, the core of who we are has never changed uh the name as yet came from a song from one of your own terence trent darby Okay. We had a song called As Yet Untitled. That was our name at first. We were sitting in a room, me, Claude, and another two guys were sitting in the room, and we were like, you know, we want to call ourselves something, but we don't want to be stigmatized to a certain kind of music. And we don't want to, you know, we don't want, we just didn't want to do that. So we called our, so, so one of the guys said, Damon Core, rest, rest, rest in, in, in peace. He said, you know, let's call ourselves As Yet Untitled after Tr Terrence Trent Darby's song. So we said, yeah, you know, it had a catchy ring to it. So we went on with it. And then, you know, when we got there, when we got to the point to where, you know, we were singing all kind of music. I mean, nothing was off the table. And when I say nothing was off the table, you really do have to check out our story. Um, it's, I mean, we, we sang everything. We called ourselves As Yet Untitled because we wanted to sing everything. And we were, you know, there was nothing in particular that we did or didn't do. Mm -hmm. So um, we caught the attention of Babyface's mother-in-law, Jacqueline yeah. McCorn. Yeah, I remember uh, I worked at Edmonds Entertainment um, in night two thousand. I, I know Jackie, knew her, yeah. Rest in peace, Jackie. Yeah, Tracy's yeah. mom, yeah. You know, she uh, she came to Philly, she heard a cassette of us, and she said, wow, um, I'm coming to you guys with Kenny, Babyface, Edmonds, you know, the, the thing that he said was, if you guys sound anywhere as good as this cassette, then you guys have a record deal. So we sang about nine to 13 songs for her at the hotel one night. And she called him on the spot and she said, Kenny, you're not going to believe it, but these guys are a hundred times better than this cassette live. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we wanted to hear him say something. So, you know, he said, hey, guys, I like the songs and, you know, you guys got a deal. Uh -huh. And that was it. And that was it. Um, this was in 1994, you know, when we, when Jackie had came. And by that time, because we didn't we didn't move out till '95, so we'd already been together for four plus years. You know, just trying to hear get somebody to hear us. Now, in the interim, we had a lot of people's ear. We had Mark Gordon from uh, from uh, 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 Levert. We had um, we had uh, uh, Brian McKnight. We had a whole bunch of people that were trying to help us out and get us deals. But I don't think anybody knew how. To market us you know we were five guys we were young you know we were we were all about our harmonies so 
You know, Babyface gave us that chance. Uh, when we first got there, a member, I'm not going to say his name. I'll just call him DB. <laughs> I, I, I'll just say that he didn't get a chance to make it. Um, and Mark Nelson took his place. We had the record deal before we got with Mark Nelson, but we knew Mark Nelson from back home. So it was easy for us to put Mark in the group because we, we knew him and we were familiar with his story. So, you know, we, that happened. My man Claude right here is original founding member. He had forfeited his position for love. Don't hit me. <laughs> he had forfeited his position for love. And, you know, that's how the door for Mark Nelson got open and everything to be one of the leads of the time, Kenny and Mark. And, um, now, that's most of the story. Anything else you'd have to add specifically? I'll let yeah. You know, I'll stop talking so much and let these gentlemen. Yeah. No, so my question then is that, um, you know, did you not think, well, you know, four is it's uh, simpler than five or, or it was it the harmonies were better for five? Hold up. Better for five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We were full. I mean, once you, once you experience that, and we've been in Five Par Harmony for four and a half years, five years up until we got our record deal, once you experience that and you get the standing ovations and the applause and, you know, when we went to sing for Babyface, he had, you know, he, when, he, when he brought people to come hear us, it was actually at one of his shows, his concerts in Washington, D.C., he had brought about five or six record labels with him. I know that there was Sony 550 there, and there was Yab Yum there at the time, his, his wife's label, which is what we, who were, we were going to be with at first. And then there was, um, there was Epic and a few others. So, you know, once you get that, once, you was in, once we were in that five-part harmony setting, it was really hard to not be in that. And that's what we wanted. So we, we continued on with that. And that's why I say the core of who we are never changed because it was, if, if, if three of us out of four of us are still original, <clears throat> original members that Babyface seeked, then this is what we had. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I, and I guess, did you then, um, before signing, did you get... Does it, is there any sort of um, pre-instructions about the music industry, what it entails, contracts and publishing, so that at least when you're signing, you have a, an inkling as, okay, you know, we know what we're getting involved into. Yeah, what happened is we, <laughs> we had, we had um, prior um, representation as amateurs. Um, so in that time of being amateurs and, and having management and all that, we learned a lot along the way as to what makes sense and what didn't make sense and what the, the good advantages were and what the bad advantages were. And so we ended up knowing way more than people thought we did know. Right. And so we were able to literally just close out that management um, um, that we had as amateurs because we were no longer amateurs. We didn't need them to get us a deal. So we ended up getting that deal actually without them. Okay. So we were educating ourselves along the way, though we still had um, people that so-called represented us that didn't really, they didn't treat us right. And once you know, we got that deal, once we got that deal, it was like, okay, here's the contract. The contract says right here, Babyface does everything. So, you know, Who's gonna argue with that? You know, you got the, you know, he at the time he had, had about a hundred number one top ten songs on the charts. And so, you know, at that point it was, hey, here you go. So, you know, that's you know, he gave us more than what we could ask for in that first album, you know. So it was either that. Mm -hmm. Or go back to Philly, and one thing we weren't going to do. Oh, we're going there. <laughs> <laughs> so. and, uh, and and the reason I ask is because um, I've, I've I've interviewed Timmy Gatling, talked about how he got, you know, 
how they they must him out of guy. I've talked to Don Robinson, um, interviewed um, um, even Tabitha Duncan from Cod Close. So everyone has got a very different story about the the size of the industry that we as fans never saw. We just see the music and the videos, and, and and I do wonder then when you have an inkling of okay, these are contracts, and you maybe get an independent lawyer who says this is what you're going to get and stuff like that. In some cases, um, do you then think this is our foot in the door, even though that they own our, they may own our names or, and own everything that we put out, but it's our chance? Or do you think, oh, well, you know, it's just too high of a price. We, we just go go out our separate ways and just... So no, first answer. <laughs> right. I think, yeah, I answered that the first time. So, yeah. So it's either... You know, you sign this contract, which says right here, you know, you ain't doing shit. And <laughs> basically, that's what it says. Turn your keys over, give the keys to Babyface, and let him drive this, you know, let him drive the shit. And that's what we did. And a good thing, because, you know, he, he did such a tremendous job with Last Night. I mean, a lot of people don't know, but, you know, most of those songs are his on that album. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know save for someone else and... You know, but Brian McKnight did write uh, Arrow Through My Heart. You know, we did, we got a great one from Brian McKnight. And we worked with, uh, with, with uh, Mervyn Warren from Take Six. You know, okay. we, you know, we did get a chance to do all of that stuff. So pretty much basically it was, it, it's either that. But, you know, thank God that the industry ain't the same today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we'll get to that. We'll get to today. <laughs> We'll get to today, and, and and I do wonder then. So back in those days, then when I mean, look, people are begging Babyface to write write them songs, so that's not even a, a no, not an, an option and stuff like that. So he's saying, <clears throat> "I'm doing everything." The do you then get somebody who to explain to look? You pretty much as a group, I'm not going to get much money from selling albums, even if you sell 100 million. But you you you're probably going to do most of it on tour or what, what, did you ever think if we sold a million that we're going to be, be the rich? Mind, the mindset to all artists that come in, because see, R&B artists are not like rock artists and not like other artists, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know who you can contribute that to. I, I would say probably Sam Cooke, maybe. I don't know. But, you know, there's a system to R&B. You know, there's producers and writers and, you know, the whole thing to put together, like, you know, with rockers, you know, there's a drummer, there's a guitarist, you know, they're going to do all of that themselves. Yeah. So, you know, for, for us, it's, it was just, it says it right here. And for most of the artists that's, that's going through what we went through, it, it's always get that first album out of the way, get that first, second album. What, what's the obligations to the contract after the second album, then, you know, then it's negotiable X, Y, and Z. Get that first and second album out of the way. And then after after that, if you're lucky enough to maintain longevity, then it's all yours after that. But okay. for us at the time, that music that we were doing, we were we were kind of at the tail edge end of our time, of, the of, era, our, yeah. of, the, of that era. Mm -hmm. So the only R&B slash pop that possibly that came after us you know, we did have the uh, in syncs and all of that, but you know, that's a that's a totally yeah different. yeah yeah. We're talking about like B2K, the last of the last. So yeah, I mean, that was a it was a dying breed at the time, but you know, we milked it for all that we could. Yeah. At the end of that, but for that era, the main thing that that, that needed to happen that didn't happen for most artists, it kind of happened for us, is lawyering up. You got management, you got to have lawyers, you got to have attorneys to make sure that um, your paperwork is straight. Then you have to have another lawyer to make sure that their paperwork is straight. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, I mean, there's, I mean, there, hey, there's so <laughs> many stories of lost money back in those days. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. But the music industry has changed, Cross you know, went through that. a whole strip down and it is where it is today. Yeah. No, no, I, you know, I, actually, somebody did tell me that that even getting a lawyer, the lawyer is more loyal to the record company than to you guys. It's because it's like if they try and fight for you guys, they may not be able to fight for the other clients. Right. Um, 
it right. boils down to who depends who you pick as a lawyer. If you pick a lawyer that's worked for that label, they're going to work for the label, not you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not for but, yeah. We've had all we 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 lived through the conflict. We lived for the conflict of interest. Our model was contracts are made to be broken. So you know every everything that basically that we did, we broke a contract to get to the next point. Mm -hmm. A contract shouldn't hold you. And that's just how we felt about it. We didn't give a boop about a contract. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you do have to be careful because, you know, the, you know, we knew that we had something worth having. So that's the only reason why we bust through those contracts like that. Until, you, and, until we bust through it, until we had no more contracts. And by the time we had no more contracts, the industry was laid down. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, what's disappointing is that, you know, we're talking about the real reality of the industry, the business side, and it takes away the, f the, the things that we as fans focused on was, was the music. Mm -hmm. And, but for you guys, it's, you, it's hard to enjoy the music side when you actually think, well, this actually is supposed to pay my bills and stuff. And you know, if people are taking and robbing, and not I would say both is robbing, but the industry is not for 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 R and B at the time, and it wasn't set up to support and, and give you guys that sort of foothold. Um, so you know, having to get all these lawyers, the managers, and, and how to you know think about the accounting, see where the money is going. I mean, it's, it's I couldn't begin to imagine how hard that is when you're supposed to focus on the craft and the creativity yeah, and you have to start watching everybody right the focus could definitely be off if you're really trying to focus on being creative and your creative your creative creativity is being blocked by you know, i think you stole 10 grand from me over there you know you can't even focus and that's where all the representation thrived on <laughs> they thrived on us keeping our focus in one direction so yeah. they can take that money and do what they wanted to do with it yeah, yeah. Uh, but the reality of it is, is that you know, once when the contract says that that money ain't really yours, that's what you're dealing with. You know, yeah. it, it, you know, go out and get your name, and brand. stay yeah. strong. Keep yeah. the brand going strong, and do whatever you got to do. So that's yeah. what we did. That's what yeah. we did. Because at so, the end of the day, when you have, you know, when you got A and R's, and you got, you know, artwork. And you got lawyers, and you got management, and you got accountant, and you got stylists and choreographers and videographers and blah, blah, blah. yeah, every you know, <laughs> just it's Comes. there's the money right there. Yeah. So so on your first album then, so the, the actual creative side of it, um, the does does he does it baby face that comes and says, okay, here's my songs I'm doing, you guys are sing, or could you guys say, oh, you know, we've been working on these songs, you know, for the last four years, can we sing this? How does how did that work for the first album? It worked like this. Sing it or go home. Hey, you, you guys need to be in the studio at six o'clock. All right, see you there. Clint, get to the studio at six o'clock. Here's the song we're doing. Oh, that's beautiful. You like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the silver line into that that process for that first album was hard to say. I'm sorry, which yeah. was the acapella that we we're known arranged for, by us, yeah. arranged by us, yeah, and you know put on the album and it sold with double platinum, yeah, on so, its own, yeah, and know. it sold platinum on the album. So, and plus we were already self-contained when when we when we, when we first got. Um, when we first met uh, Kenny, when we first met him, we were already, we knew what we were doing and he knew that. Yeah. Didn't matter, but <laughs> <laughs> to our fans and everyone, we love what Babyface did for us. Right. I mean, like yeah. we still That's the go around the world singing these amazing songs mm -hmm. that we got from just the one album that we did with him. So, right. you know, I, yeah. I, I, you know, about Six to eight baby face songs, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. as I said, yeah, he, he, you know, between him and Stevie and Smokey, I mean, there's you know, Jimmy and Terry, there's very they dominated, um, you know, the last 50 60 years of music, so yeah, 
And the yeah. beauty is we still have his name to use whenever we want. Yeah. And whenever, <laughs> whenever we see him from time to time, we may do a performance with him, you know, yeah. or, you know, end up at his studio working or something like that. But, you know, we're still good friends. Everything is, you know, everything is on the up. Yeah. yeah. And, and so you're signing to um, directly with LaFace, or do you sign through Yum Yum to LaFace, or do you sign? No, we, we, were, we were going to be signed to Yab Yum, which, is yeah, Tracy, yeah. which was Tracy's label at the time. With Yum B? Tracy Evans, yeah. It used to be Evans, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was her label, but we didn't end up signing with Yab Yum. We ended up signing with LaFace Arista, which Arista was our parent company, and Clive Davis. Peace, Clive. <laughs> Clive, yeah. So you went directly to, 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 to LaFace. Um, yes. So when, when you're in the studio and, and, and your baby faces, what, what's it like work um, being in the studio with Kenny? Because I guess, you know, as I said, we know him as um, this amazing songwriter. Um, and it almost feels like he just wakes up and he has a song in his hand. Is he is he a taskmaster in um, in the studio? Or any, or what was it like in a recording process with him? Oh, it was surreal because I mean, it's, it's one thing to be in awe of somebody because of their history and what they achieved, but it's another thing to actually be in that moment and be respected on the same level. You know, mm -hmm. He never treated us like we were beneath him. He, he treated us like every other artist he's ever worked with, from Aretha Franklin down to uh, uh, Tony Braxton to John, John B. I mean, I mean, I mean you yeah. know, one time they asked him in the, it was in the late 90s, they asked him if you had, if you had a dream team, what would that dream team consist of? He said, it would be himself, Juan Day Morris, Sean Stockman, Mark Nelson, and Kenny Terry. That was his dream team in, in the 90s. And so actually did that, that way. That, yeah, that <laughs> shocked us because you know, here's the great baby face. But he was he was definitely in awe with what we did. And I think you know he learned some things from us as we did from him as well. Yeah. yeah. And and so he brings the songs. Um, when you see the songs, do you think, yep, these are hits? Or do you think, okay, not bad? Or what's, what are your thoughts when you when the songs are presented? No, but, I mean, you're told this is what you're going to sing. But what did you, did you think, yeah, this one looks like it's going to be a hit? If we knew they were hits before we even heard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like what you said, Neil. It's he was like, when he, well, when we got to his house, when we got to his house, you know, it was a, it was surreal. You know, we got to his house, we sat down. Um, he had a, he had a studio on one side of his house, and then there was a hallway, and then the room aside to the studio where he was going to play the music for us. So you know, he was like, "I'm going to play you guys a few songs, and you tell me if you like them or not." He's like, "We like them." <laughs> Before he started. <laughs> so that's pretty much how that went, and everything else was cake and ice cream. So, so you 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 big your big hit um, last night. So when he plays it, do you immediately think, "Wow, this is it," or what were your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we yeah, because well, uh, first, of course, the way he would uh, uh, present a demo because it was a demo at the time. He, he, he already knew that we had the, the background um, taken care of. So he sang the lead to us. Yeah. And then he had um, a lead um, track of his voice on, on the, um, the song. And he wasn't even trying to sing it. Like, he wasn't singing it like himself. He was just like, yeah. and then they singing it softly throughout, throughout the track. Right. But he was depending on us to know how to, put, you know, bring it all out. And we knew just, just how to like, bring it yeah. all out. So... Okay. Uh, the, um, the process, the way it went, is we went and we, um, we laid down all of the vocals to the backgrounds first. And he hadn't even uh, finished writing the, the leads to the song yet. Right? Oh. He, he had just wrote the chorus to the song. 
And so we, we kind of slept on that. Before we laid down, laid that down, and then we just kind of let that go for what, like a couple of weeks? Yeah. Because I, 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 I don't think we finished it. That wasn't no, that was like the first thing we did. But the first thing we did, but it ended up being the, one of the last things we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, wow. you know, we were experimenting with so much. We were working with Brian McKnight. We were working with Mervyn Moore. We worked with Diane Warren. Ooh, it's a great Diane Warren. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we worked with a lot of people, and we were just trying to find our niche. Mm -hmm. And pretty much everything we did, he liked and everybody liked. But it was pretty much his call. So we just, you know, good faith, let him take care of it, and it worked out perfect. We did appreciate, too, how he worked with us when it came to the, the, the fantasy list of people that we wanted to work with. You know, like, Bourbon Warren was definitely one of the, one of the first people because, yeah. you know, he's one of the guys from Take Six. Yeah. yeah. He's the, like the master ranger when it comes to, to harmony and stuff. Okay. We need him to do the harmony. But and we wanted to, but when they asked us who we yeah, wanted to work with, involved, right. Take Six was one of the first on the list. That's right. what they delivered to us. That was the top Warren, of the so. line for yeah. that time. So, yeah. So we worked together on that. Okay, Man. okay. Did, did LA get involved? I mean, he was running the label, but does he does he just say what's going on? Does he help out with any production at those days? He didn't get involved in any production uh, at all. He was more behind the scenes on marketing us and getting us where we needed to be. You know, he was he was he was more of a, the, the godfather. You know, we'd go over to his house, big ass tent, and <laughs> a strip the size of your hand. <laughs> and, uh, and uh you know we would get over there and just have fun and kick it he would ask us you know how we wanted to be market how would we like to be seen he was more of the the director of the vision yeah of, of and he pretty much laid it out for us yeah and then, and before the the album you know you're recording and, and you're getting the songs together do you then interface with Tony and Usher and TLC and Outkast and in the Bahamas? Oh yeah, yeah. We went to the Bahamas. Um, the Face did a retreat. It was us, Tony Braxton, the Braxton. I mean, I'm sorry, the yeah. Braxtons. At the yeah. Braxtons. Tony was, on, yeah. Tony was on that second album at the time. Goody okay. Mob, Outkast. You know, so we went over to the Bahamas and we all, you know, kind of meshed. And this was the La Face family in the late 90s. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah, we ran into Tony a few times. You know, she's real cool. TLC. She's real yeah. cool. TLC, yeah. yeah. We ran into them a bunch. And and of course, um, you know, Outkast and um, Goody Mob. We used to see CeeLo all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the face, the face family was, that was, it was good to be a part of it in, in the late 90s. Yeah, I mean, as I said, like royalty. it was like I would say probably what Motown was in, in those days because yeah, it was it was it was a tight. Yeah, shape. I put out a poll this evening. Uh, well, and um, I said which label do they do people think gave them the best hits in the '90s, and it was between Uptown, The Face, Bad Boy, and So So Deaf. And lots of people says they couldn't pick because all the labels had. You know, your up, Uptown had Mary Jodeci, Heavy D, and, and Guy and stuff, and you, you know, the face had you know Tonys and, and TLCs and, and uh, uh, Usher and, and and yourselves, and you know, Bad Boy had Total and Biggie. So it was almost like a, a sense of appreciation of when R&B labels were at its peak with, with all the richness and, and stuff. Um, so it, it's. You know, here you guys are. You finished the um, making the album. Where are you guys living? So you, you're Philadelphia. Are you in LA or are you in Atlanta while the recording is going ahead? You know that that was a hard choice because LA wanted us in Atlanta because most of the acts on the face were in Atlanta, and if you were in Atlanta, then you were really being groomed by the machine. Mm. But that's Kenny, wrong. But Kenny <laughs> Babyface really wanted us in LA. Yeah. Because he, That's he, he wanted did. to make sure that he put his hands on this project the right way. And when they asked us, our choice was LA for sure. 
because we wanted to be with Babyface. You know, we wanted to be there. I mean, what it was, that was we, our dream for years, even before we met him. But we wanted to always be in his face too. Yeah, so we wanted to be under his wing. We wanted to be under his wing the way he wanted us under his wing. Mm -hmm. So it was it was LA for sure, which was really hard because he had so much going on at the time. Yeah, LA had so much. He had on. Tony Braxton project. He had the um, Waiting to Excel. Uh, oh yeah, uh, that was a big one. He had us. He had uh, who else? Yeah. Yeah. John B. He had yeah. us. He had everybody. So we did good to to, to stick in there and stay right. and get anything done. So yeah, and, and 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 I probably it explains why if people think of the face records, you guys don't jump out in as much because you probably weren't as embedded in the Atlanta scene with the rest. Um, right. Did you think that that harms the longevity of the of being with LaFace being in under, because I know baby, LA and Babyface. No, no, we didn't think any of that because we were confident and it didn't matter if we were in Connecticut. And, you know, we, we didn't, we really didn't care. We were confident. And we knew that all we needed was for our music to get out there and our charisma would take over yeah. anything after that. But, you know, but... It felt kind of weird. But at the time, you, you couldn't, you know, once the brotherhood got tainted and pieces started falling off, you know, you, you really couldn't predict what new members and what people would do. So then... You know, that's that's that started the downfall of well, thank God. who we were at the time. Thank God and we how we dispersed from that unit at the time. But we never, we never, never, never decided we was going to disband. That was never, we never ever disband. We've always had this core. Never an option. Yeah. So the um, the, so you know the, the single comes out last night. And it's on the is it Naughty Professor soundtrack? Yes. Yeah. Um, Russell. Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons. Yeah. Yeah. Russell Simmons, yeah. When he was still when he was still working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but so it comes out and, and it was a very it did it see it was an expensive video because it's very imaginative, you know, there's a sort of spinning and everything, but I would have thought green screen it was probably it was blue screen. And oh, it blue screen. At, its time, at the time, it was very expensive. Um, oh. It was it was directed by Billy Woodruff, who actually worked on uh, Empire. I mean, and uh, what that star? star. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Empire. He he did work on both of those. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he had the vision at the time. It was way ahead of its time at the time, but it, it was it was pretty expensive. Because I, I, I would have thought that, oh, it was just one of those you get a screen and you just change the background and you just spin around that it would have been much it's cheaper than... That's, <laughs> it's, it's easy to do now. Right. <laughs> yeah. You needed yeah. a supercomputer back then. They said <laughs> Waterfalls was like a $5 million video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they used, they had CTI yeah. with them doing their thing, so I, would, and my, I could understand that. But I thought that, oh, this is a... You know, nice, very low cost, low budget video that you guys had, but that wasn't now because when they when they're coming up with the concept of the video, are they saying so? This is what you guys are paying for, and you guys say, yeah, yeah. No, we'll, 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 what's it like? When yeah, it, we, we we read the treatment. You look at the prices, <laughs> and you go pay. You know, sky's the limits. Well, that being our first video, I mean, it, it was like all or nothing. You gotta make an impact, you gotta make a splash. Okay. Right. So when, when Kenny had finished the song, did you think, wow, this is gonna be a number one hit? Did you did you could you feel that or was it like yeah, not yeah. We felt yeah. that we felt that we knew that that and that didn't happen to be the first one to come out. Yeah, that's the number one on the RB charts billboard, and I think top five, top two, something like that at top of the pops. Yeah, and hard to say, I'm sorry as well, you know. Yeah, and so the, the so the, 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 the you're living in LA. LA, you know, I lived in LA for 
I lived in Redondo Beach, so it's not it's not a, not a cheap place to live. Sherman Oaks. Yeah. You were Sherman Oaks, okay. Sherman Oaks, baby. Born here for like 20 years. Yeah. We've been in LA for like 20 years at the time. But we were like flying in and out. You know, we were going to Holland a lot because we were really huge in Holland. We were really huge in Australia. You know, we've done, you know, Germany so many times. You know, London. You know, yeah. you stayed at Rosner House too many times. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, no, it's still, still there. But I mean, I was saying that when, 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 when the song, your first single blows up like that, um, what does it do as a, for, the, for the group when your first single blows up like that? Does it, does, do you get a lot of love from the labels and everyone's saying, okay, what do you want? Or what, what's it like? Job security. <laughs> it's, it's it's it feels great i mean the to know that all the hard work that we did over the years you know even for the members that wasn't with us at the time i mean it it, it was so gratifying to hear you know your music on the radio for the first time and to be going over to other countries and they screaming for you like crazy and it, we can't thank babyface enough Brian McKnight enough, Peter Cetera, David Foster enough. I mean, for just giving us the inspiration to do what we love to do. And mm -hmm. we will do this probably until we die because we love music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was at the time too? Yeah. Ramon Baines. Ramon Baines and Courtney. And Courtney, yeah. And, and so did, did, were you then told that, look, where the, because you didn't write the, the songs, so where you'd get the bulk of your money would be touring. Um, then were you able to support the album and um, on tours heavily at that, in that 95, 96? In 96, 97. Man, look, all of the touring money and everything all consumed itself. We were out there doing what we love to do. And it was, it was just that. I mean, you, you're talking about kids. I mean, we weren't kids. We were just basically in our early 20s. Yeah. You know, and everything was yes. There was rarely many no's. Everything was yes. So, yes, we like that for the tour. Yes, we like those outfits. <laughs> yes, we like this budget for the video. Yes, we like these songs. Um, and it just, it just goes past. It's so much fun goes past like that and then you turn around and then bam the internet oh napster <laughs> you said napster. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was i was out there yeah i was out there all the record stores closed oh, right. yeah and then, the biggest, and then the biggest record label of all time emerges itunes itunes yeah 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 and then the world changes now there's a viral thing going on. Get viral. Do something. You know, if we would have had these tools when we were back in like 93, 92, it, it, I can't even imagine. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, we may be on queen status. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, it that everything happens for a reason. Times change. Yeah. You know, who knows why Take Six decided to be gospel and not R&B. Yeah. Know, who, who knows why uh, the internet made the crash and everything. But today, everything is not what it was. So you cannot use the formulas of yesterday yeah. to get to what you need to today. Yeah. Unless, you know, you're Unless lucky. you want to get swindled by the same people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, after the success of the first single, first album, why? What happened with the? Why not the second with the face? At that time, it was about us. And like I said, when you lose the brotherhood that you started out with, and it it no longer is as fun as it was. No longer genuine. When it when it when it became a job to us, that's when things changed. So. I mean, and that's a whole nother book, you know. Like I said, our, our story, we have a we do have our story, our as yet story. It'll be coming out fairly soon. 
But, you know, you have to check out that, I mean, to get the full story and to understand who we are, Wait where we come from, and what we're about. We're still living it, though. We're still living it. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I'm saying that it was the actual, it wasn't the, the L.A. says, you know, even though you've gone platinum and, and stuff, we're not going to put a second album. It was you guys saying we're not in the right position to continue recording. Was was It, it, it was us that couldn't see each other for who we were. Mm. And for that, you know, we couldn't go any further with, with who we were at the time. And, you know, that's the, that's the rule. If yeah. it ain't working, you got to fix it, you got to change it. So we couldn't, we couldn't go no further with ourselves at the time. You know, that once that first album was over and the, and the unit that we were at the time, the five of us, it was not going any further. Yeah. We wouldn't allow it to go any further with the so, members that we had. So So then what does LA, what does baby, what does face, what do they say? Do they come and say get your act together? Or how did that mean because you've you've been you're successful and you but even though internally you guys aren't your hearts aren't there, but you know, they've signed you up and expect something. What did what did they how did they feel let let down or what's what's well, <laughs> You know, they, they had a hand in it, of course. They had a hand in it as well. So um, I, I, I can't really go into much detail yeah. about the personal side of, you know, the meetings between us and L.A. Reid, the meetings between us and Babyface, us and Jackie McCorn and our management. But, you know, things weren't right. Attitudes weren't right. And we couldn't move no further at the time. And we put it to bed at that time. And then we emerged always who we are. And we just had to cut the fat. Yeah. So, so did you guys, so did, does LaFace drop as yet? Or do you, what happens technically, like, you know, are you still, were you still technically signed to them? Technically, technically, we, you could say we were dropped. I mean, you know, when you ain't showing up to work and you're not the same, mm -hmm. we expected that. But see, that was, you know, in a lot of ways, you can't go further until you get <laughs> until you get what you need to go for it. So if you're yeah. stuck on that label, which I'm so glad that we didn't, you know, they gave us they gave us the 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 luxury of dropping us instead of shelving us that would have been even worse mm. so, but like i said at the time they could have shelved us because the industry went <sighs> yeah and that was that so so i guess what i'm trying to say because you, you you asked in the questions but well, i guess what i'm trying to say to the answer to your question is we met a time where the industry collapsed at the same time that we were done yeah so it, it wasn't really like we were dropped because the face dropped, everything dropped. Yeah. The, the internet dropped everything coming into 2000. 2000, yeah, and the face gets merged into Aristo and J Records. Yeah. And then we yeah. picked back up at DreamWorks Records, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So in, in, the, in the midst of, of, of all this stuff, um, we, we, you know, through, through all this, I guess there are two questions. One is, how do you guys earn, um, before this new incarnation and before the, um, um, talk about the new project you have, how does one earn money when you're not touring and you're, you're not releasing an album and you're living in, in a very expensive city like Los Angeles? Well, we, were we were still performing. We still... Okay. We, we were still going to Australia. We were still going to uh, Amsterdam. We were still, it was sporadic, but, you know, we, we stuck together. You know, we okay. did it in Malaysia, you know. Yeah. Whatever, we, stuck we still made music. We still we, made music. We still lived our lives. You know, we, we all have our own uh, families and, and, and grew that way as well, so. Everything was just not being in the music all the time, but you never let the music go. Yeah, which is yeah. which is good. Like, and, and I guess that's the one thing that we, we, you know, we got used to seeing music videos and seeing people on the radio. And when we don't, 
we we don't we have no idea that there's still you're still doing the circuits you're still sustaining you're still releasing music to, to perform so there's four of you here now how did then what how did this sort of foundation where you guys are now and sort of the ownership of having a brand name having your own label and and do it and take an ownership how how did when did it begin and how did the how did everyone get sort of brought in okay so um we brought claude back um and it was that 12 actually 13 actually 12. 12 i'm sorry we bought we we were me and kenny were a part of the Marvin Gaye's My Brother Marvin play for Marvin Gaye's story. Okay. And that was in 2012. And then we uh, we had an offer, you know, there was this, in Malaysia, there was an idol winner. She was an idol, she was a Malaysian idol winner. She okay. wanted to do a song with her favorite artist, which was As Yet at the time. So um, at the time, is when we picked Claude back up and we went to Malaysia and we did this beautiful song called Magical Moment video, uh, and shot a video for it <clears throat> and um, started the ball to everything that we're doing right now. So, and, and so, I mean, Claude, they're calling you back after all this time. You've seen them number one record. Were you ready to, to leave life and just jump on the road or was, you, it, was it easy to say yes? I mean, yeah, I mean, when I left, it was because of family circumstances, you know? I mean, I was then married at the time. Um, my wife was, uh, she was pregnant, but she was very sick, you know, and it, it caused lots of problems, you know? Um, miraculously, when I did leave and we moved to Georgia, with prayer and with the support of the family, she got together. She got herself together, you know. Um, the baby, you know, the baby came out healthy. You know, everything was good from there. And then I had to work hard to try to keep things going. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Dead end jobs, trying to get it, trying to keep it going. You know, basically. But was yeah. it like seeing what seeing your your, your guys? Uh, it was torture, probably. Yeah. Torture! <laughs> you know, I mean, I was, I was with them from the beginning, you know? We worked so hard, you know, arranging, doing things, and just loving to be with my guys. Now, they're, all, they're out there with these other cats, out there dancing and singing. <laughs> And I'm working hard every day looking at them. I'm like, damn. <laughs> hey, damn. But, but you know something? <laughs> it was a it was a, it was it was a no-brainer to give Claude his spot back after so many years because man, we went through the we've been through the trenches with this guy. I mean, you know, he was responsible for a lot of our sound in the mm -hmm. beginning because he is the master arranger. Oh, um, yes, yeah, yeah, he said he was cool. us a lot in the process, and we all learned a lot from each other mm -hmm. in the process. So it wasn't a, it, it was, it was definitely a no brainer to give him back his spot. Yeah. And um, so it was easy to make a decision to get back. Yes. <laughs> but then, but then, cool, I, I guess being away for such a long time, was it hard to get back into the singing? Because I, I I'm not a singer, so I don't know what it's like when you're sort of a, not doing it day in day out. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, the opportunity presented itself. You know, I was having, you know, problems in my marriage at the time. You know, and this was the perfect opportunity for me to start over. Mm -hmm. You know, and at the same time, I mean, if they had came earlier, and I was able to just jump and get into the group, I would have had any chance that I would have, you know? So it was, it was just, to me, it was a no-brainer, but 
the opportunity presented itself in a way where it was just easy for me to make the transition. Yeah. yeah. And so after the success of the, of the video, um, how did you guys decide what you wanted to do going forward? And, and of course, you know, you know, I, there was still upheaval with, with members before we settled on, on the final four of you that are here now. When, when did you decide, look, this is, we, we need to sort of make sure that we get the right people to make sure we move forward. And even if we have to be four, we'd rather do that. It's, it's, it's never about the decision that we made about members and past members and stuff. If you are not here, then you, you didn't want to be here. You removed yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you are an ex-member and not here, it's because you removed yourself and that was your decision. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, with the exception of maybe one. <laughs> 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 but pretty much, you know, we, we, we are more than an organization. You know, we are a brotherhood, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's, that's what we step with first when we step with each other. Yeah. We step with the brotherhood first. We step with the brotherhood first. Yeah. And when that brotherhood turns sour, we take that foot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the integrity basically at the end of the day the integrity of who we are as men has to be in place yeah. you know integrity is lost there's, it's lost there's, pretty much there's, no, it need, there's no more talking about trying it to break something that's fix something that's broken it's broken still yeah. it's dried up it's gone sour bye yeah and, and so right now then are you guys you, do you have because uh, if you look at you guys up in there, it's like, do you have your, did you decide to then say, okay, we're, we're, we're going to try and release music independently. We're going to try and create our own music and, and, and take control of our own destiny. Or, or what was the idea after the four of you came together? We, uh, have you seen our latest video? No, I've only, uh, the only thing I've seen was, um, the, the stuff that you did with Father MC, the little okay, clip. Okay, yeah. well, lately we have worked with Neo. We have two oh. songs with Neo. We have worked with uh, Be Slayed. Be Slayed um, actually has our first single that we released already. If you if you go on uh, YouTube and you type in As Yet and you type in our latest single, Kleptomaniac. You'll see our latest video, and um, we just put that out a few weeks ago. And I answer a lot of questions. And I answer a lot of questions. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we've been we've been working. We've been working with a few good names. Chris uh, Chris Henderson. Chris Henderson he did blaming on the alcohol and uh, mm. did uh, cases happily. Tony Dixon. Yeah. You know we 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 we're keeping current. You know, we're in talks with Tim. Tim Bob, Tim Bob, you know, yeah. we're just, uh, we're making it happen. And, you know, I, I would just say, look at our latest video and then tell us what you think. Yeah. And, and so, but I, I, are you on your own, in, or did you create your own label to, to this figure stuff? Or yeah. are you? Yes. yes, we're independent at this yes, point. We have As Yet Records. As Yet Records, okay. And, and is, the, is the plan based on how the industry has shifted to continue that way? Or would you start to think, well, if somebody, a label comes and says, hey, we'll help distribute this, but we're going to own it. It's it 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 questions now. If it makes <laughs> sense and, and, you know, the, the, the business and the monies and all that stuff is even and it's right, we, we will we'll probably play ball. You know, it's just got to make sense, though. Got to start right. correct. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I guess, you know, you know, just as we're wrapping up, you did mention that the industry has changed a great deal since when Napster came and uh, iTunes and all the labels that by eating themselves up and becoming just three major ones. Um, and now it's almost like a chance for people to put their stuff out the same way that the independents, the majors do. Um, YouTube, um, um, iTunes, and ten, uh, Spotify, and all that stuff, and especially helps the fact that you have um, you've had big hits in the past, so that would, does, does help. Um, 
do you then see it that does the music coming out is that the vehicle to for the touring or is it the fact that we hope that the music generates enough income on its own or what what, what does it look like for independent artists it's definitely harder today it is not the latter today it is you put you know we we're, we're using it as the vehicle to get back on the road so you can see what's coming your way. Okay. You know, as far as record sales and the way that things are going right now, you have Spotify, you have YouTube, you have all of these things that will keep people from spending a dollar twenty-nine on your single mm -hmm. or five ninety-nine on your EP. I mean, what are they gonna do? They're gonna go to Spotify, they're gonna go to iTunes, they're going to go to Apple Music. So um, right now it's it's a it's a how do they say it? It's a gut time for but, all the, for artists right to, now. To answer that other part of your question though, yeah, it would spearhead us touring. And especially right now, I mean, we don't even have to tour, we can just stream it stream it live. Virtual show right and now. And that's what we're actually preparing and getting yeah, that meeting right that, now. Yeah. It's funny, we have that meeting Saturday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So that's that's the one of the things that you've been looking to do, take advantage of this and, and do virtual concerts and, oh, and yeah. things. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, there, and, uh, go ahead. And there is a, there is an actual body of work mm -hmm. ready to go. So it's just it's it's just setting everything up. Yeah. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. We're just yeah. setting up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but so I think finally, do you guys then think there's the need to record 13 songs like you would on an album, or would you then go, let's just do three or four um, and, and, and slowly release them once every four months? Uh, what, what's... Let's keep a bunch of songs ready. Well, we, we, have, we have both. I mean, <laughs> we're prepared, to do we're prepared for either way. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, we are, this is, this is early stages for groups like us. You know what I mean? Like, we, we could do either. Like right now, we released a single. We have enough for albums. You know, we have, we have material for albums. Um, but right now, I think that just releasing a song and a video is, is best. And showing exactly who we are right now, right. not who we were then. Yeah, just yeah. Like spot, spot fillers, you know, on an album yeah. and everything, you know. It's that, only that fat guy, he's kind of, you know. Yeah. Visual has got to be there and everything has got to be set up right. So when you hear a new song from Azure, you're going to get a visual every time. Yes. Okay. Okay. And so I guess that's the, um, so do, do you have, okay. So as I said, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll make sure we look at the, the, the new video that, that's, that's come out to see what, what, what's, what's out there. And you said that you'd be looking in a couple of months or you'll be looking, you have a decision about having a virtual concert until, because here in the UK, I mean, we're on lockdown, so there, you, there's, you can't even go into any, you can only go to the grocery store. That's about it. Anyway, you'll be able to watch it from the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's been really great. I mean, um, and I'll put up your, I, I, apart from your Instagram, I, I'll, I'll, if, if, if I can get the rest of your social media details so that when, I'm putting this out that people can know where to to follow. Yeah, I see that via text in your DM. Okay, okay. Don't forget, you know, to post our video. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, no, I, I, I will do that because I know. Luckily, now with with the way say YouTube does, at least it it um, it, it gets um, you you get it gets generated and stuff. How I always end um, my interviews is that I I, I tend to ask my guests if you were stuck in an elevator and you were, you know, it, it's gonna take a couple of hours before you get, they can get you out, but you have an opportunity to watch a movie while you're in there. It'd be great to find out from each of you what movie you'd request to watch. Okay, me first. Yeah. Ask that story. <laughs> okay. Yeah, before, those, before, before that does come out, <laughs> What uh, one that's already in, in the market, somebody could have that's already watched. 
the the Temptations movie. Okay, okay, the the TV one, the one, yeah, that that was one of my favorite. Yeah. Okay, I, I would watch the first Nutty Professor. Okay, okay, Life. I would watch Life. Life. Okay, yeah, that's 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 a good Five one. Heartbeats. Five heartbeats. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's that's especially as a group. And so the final then is they're about to put the movie, but you have an opportunity, a chance to listen to a song. What song would you each request to listen to? Hmm. Hmm. Wow, that's a, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Say the question one more time. Yeah, a song. So they're about to put on the movie, they said, okay, it will take a few minutes, but let's play a song for you. What song would you, what's your go-to song that you'd play, that you'd say, yep, yeah, give me, play me this song? I'll say a song for you by Donna Hathaway. Okay. Yeah. I just have to say, giving you the best that I got. Oh, I need a break here. Okay. She, she reminds me of when I was like two, maybe even one, and my mom would just yeah. sing to me. Wow. And that's the feeling that I get when I hear that song. Like wow. when I hear the song in the whole I, I would say anything young Michael Jackson. Anything. Okay. Young Michael Jackson. Are you talking Ben Michael Jackson? Anything young Michael Jackson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what about you, sir? Probably um, either some Donny Hathaway or Stevie Wonder. Okay. Okay. Now, it's always been fascinating. Um, it's always fascinating how, oh, well, a lot of my guests, you know, they always throw up uh, Donny Hathaway, but, um, you know, everyone has a very different track as song and stuff but it's it's a way of asking a question not to say what's your favorite movie what's your favorite song um most of us have that but um you know it's it's really been great uh, you know talking to you guys um you know the backstories are probably as intriguing to us as fans as as anything else because as i said we see the videos we you know and we assume that everyone's living in mansions and stuff and not realizing that no it, it isn't that that straightforward i was speaking to one recording artist who after the group broke up joined the N N N nypd um for, for almost 20 years because you know you know broke up they were big in the 90s when the band broke up you know he had needed to get he had kids he needed to get insurance and so joined the police and i was like wow you know it's humbling to think that it's not as straightforward as the rest of us who if we lose one job we can go get another job yeah. when you've come out with a number one record you know you're quite recognizable so and you you can't just go in and uh, go join another bank or something like that it's so it's fascinating yeah. to see how you guys manage <laughs> yeah human at the end of the day but i said we're still human at the end of the day yeah, no, you, you, you're, you're right. Um, and but it's it's it's. I mean, I, the good thing is, um, I'm, I'm, you know, you, you don't have um, unless it's going to come out in a movie in the book. The the sort of stories where um, they took all your publishing, um, took all your royalties, no. and uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so yeah. well, we were smarter than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. You stupid! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it's it's been it's been really good. Um, you know, hearing hearing your stories and stuff like that. And that's that's the journey and stuff, and that sense of brotherhood and that, that importance of, of, of that, and and even walking away from a record deal because it wasn't right. Because then, as fans, we would be robbed if you're just putting out music for the sake of it. When behind the scenes, you guys. When we're, we're, we're together and stuff, um, and so that's that's a great call and stuff. And you know, even for yourself, Claude, saying mm -hmm. for the sake of family, you guys go ahead and stuff. And and but being able to have the opportunity to come back, um, you know, it's a real amazing story. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you know you, you you know you guys are back in a form that actually works for you guys and and probably us for us fans the truth in, in the music that, that you're going to release and stuff. So, 
Yeah, I appreciate this this the, the time. It's two thirty in the morning here, but um, you know it's <laughs> it isn't too bad. But um, yeah, um, you did. I know you did a record Father MC. You said you've done one. Um, you're speaking to Tim and Bob. So you're looking to continue making recording, 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 and yeah. and when COVID is over and people can go, are you you then looking to get back onto the onto tour scene the 90s and absolutely oh, yeah. yes yes but it all starts with kleptomaniac so you make sure you check that out because you know what we have nothing else to say about the past and the yeah. future just that kleptomaniac we feel ties us from the past to the future to where we are today we get great reviews from it, from the song itself. And now we're starting to get great reviews from the video. So okay. check it out. Yeah. yeah check it out. Come and, 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 you know, Kleptomaniac is, it's compared to everything that we have that's, that's about to come, it's, it's, it's right in there. So okay. you, know, you love Kleptomaniac, then you're going to love the rest of what we got coming. Yeah, no, definitely looking forward to that. You didn't get Kenny to do anything or... Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But we, we were, we, we did hang out a few times. So, okay. You know, we're talking about mm -hmm. a few things, but, you know, right now it's about us. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you guys writing your own stuff, though? Or, yeah, we or, talk pretty much a lot. Uh, you, so, you're, you're writing and doing your stuff yourself? Yes, pretty much lately. Oh, yeah. Okay. We've always had, we've always, we always did. You know, it's just that for the sake of getting you know, it popping, getting, yeah. getting everybody, you know, getting everybody else's out there that's got bigger names and all of that at the time. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. the association. That's right. Okay. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching. Mm -hmm.